they spent a lot of time looking at, you know, all proteins are made from amino acid building blocks. Mm -hmm. And so one question I get, and students hate this, is why do I need to know? I make them memorize. I make you memorize the side chains of the amino acids. Why do I do that? Because the side chains of the amino acids are the key to weigh all the catalysts in your body function. A catalyst simply enhances the rate of conversion of some small molecule into some other small molecule. And you know, it can enhance the rate of the end conversion by 10 to the 15th volt. So if you didn't have that catalyst, you couldn't, you couldn't do anything. So amino acid side chains play a key role in catalysis. So thinking about the pro chemical properties of the amino acid side chains is key to understanding all the transformations in your body. So what is the pKa of aminazole? You remember that? I don't. Huh? I don't. How can you not remember that? <laughs> Anyhow, the pKa of the midazole is like, you know, close to seven. Okay, so those physiological, everything in the body is controlled. The pH has to be controlled. Um, and so that means that you can protonate or deprotonate it. And this, so knowing that is key to thinking about how the chemical reaction is going to work. Um, the, the amino acid side chains now, you know, everybody thought there were 21 amino acids, 22 amino acids. But now we know almost all these amino acids can be modified once they get into the protein. So that's called post-translational modification. So now we have probably another 250 modifications. And one of the modifications that um, is essential, not for the catalysis part of proteins, but for the the structural part of co proteins is hydroxylation of the amino acid proline. Mm -hmm. So if you don't hydroxylate proline, then you can't make this molecule called collagen. And collagen <clears throat> is a structural protein. It's 25% of all humans' protein. Okay, and it's found extracellularly. Um, gram per gram, it has a strength of steel. Um, it has very complicated biosynthetic pathway. It has amazing tensile strength that's found in cartilage and teeth and bone. Um, and a key component of collagen is, is this hydroxylated proline, because without it, you, you can't form the actual collagen structure. So collagen is this long, most proteins, um, if you look at the structures, they look like little balls, they're globular. But collagen is a fibrillar protein. So it's very long. It's, I mean, it's probably the longest protein, too. It's 3,000 angstroms long. And so, and it, and it has three chains initially, and they, they're left-handed sort of helices, but not real helices, and they have to wind around each other to form a right-handed helix. This all happens inside the cell, then somehow has to get to the outside of the cell. Um, people are studying that now. And then it forms additional fibrils, and they become insoluble, and that provides the strength. The extracellular um, structures provide the strength that maintain the cell's shape and viability of the cell. And a key component of all that is hydroxylation of proline. And how did they find that? This goes back to, again, misregulation. So in the 1600s or whenever they used to sail the ocean blue with no food, um, they didn't have enough vitamin C, so they didn't have any citrus mm -hmm. fruit. So vitamin C has, um, has the vitamin ascorbate, um, <clears throat> and ascorbate plays a key role in the chemistry of allowing the proline to become hydroxylated. So it turns out to get the proline to be hydroxylated, use, again, metal-catalyzed reactions. So here's iron two. And if that iron two, it reacts with oxygen. If, if it gets oxidized to iron three, it can't react. So the function of this vitamin is to keep the iron two in the, in the reduced state. So there's an example. People study that. It took them many, many, many years, like 200 years later, when they really understand the details of how this post-translational modification actually occurs, and we understand a lot about that chemistry now. And this was the first one of these modifications discovered, and now and it, now they're finding this modification everywhere. So lots of amino acids turn out to be hydroxylated, not just proline. 
Um, so these modified amino acids now are, because the technology we have is so mind-boggling, um, we can find a needle in a haystack. And whereas in the beginning, you know, we were just trying to figure out what the amino acids were. Now we have very, very sensitive analytical methods which allow us to see all of these modifications. And then the key question is, what is the function of the modification? And that's not so easy um, in terms of thinking about regulation anyhow. And that's the focus of a lot of people's efforts right now.